Hello students, myself Patil Ashwin Kumar and I am from RBNB College, Shirampur. As previously we were discussing about the modern periodic table, we have seen that how much classification that it carried for the elements and we have seen some different characteristics about the S block elements and P block elements. Now we are going to discuss the characteristics of D block elements. Which are the D block elements? They are situated in the periodic table along the group number 3 to 12th group. These elements are known to be D block elements because while looking their electronic configuration, the outermost or the last electron enters into the D orbital. That's why they are placed in the D block elements. Okay. These all elements belonging to the D block, they are metals. They all are metals and they are, they are situated between the highly reactive S block elements and non-reactive elements of group 13 and 14. Group 13 and 14. These, in these elements that the D block or the D orbital is partially filled which carries Ten electrons. That's why there are ten groups situated for the D block elements. Again, these D block elements are also known as transition elements. Transition elements or transition metals. Transition metals. These metals or these D block elements possess some different characteristics like variable variable oxidation state variable oxidation state again that paramagnetism due to that hybridization they show the paramagnetic effect or paramagnetism again d block elements they show what we can say this different Colored ions, colored ions, these D block elements or transition metals can be used as a catalyst for the various chemical reactions. Okay, again, these D block elements, they in that, that zinc, again, uh, that cadmium and mercury, these three elements, which one? Zinc, cadmium, and mercury in these three elements they don't show the properties of transition elements that is they don't show the various oxidation state paramagnetism and that different color ions why because their outer electronic configuration if we see that ns2 and n minus 1 d10 this one is the general electron configuration for these three elements means their outer electron outer most electronic configuration is looking to be stable that's why they don't show the properties of transition metals okay again if we see that d block elements they are situated between the s and p block samely that there are few elements which are carried or they are dragged different from the d block elements that is from lanthanum atomic number 57 and actinium that is its atomic number is 89 these two elements belongs to third group but from these elements some elements or 14 elements they have been dragged and placed in the different block that is known to be the f block that is known as f block the elements of lanthanum are starting after lanthanum that is from CCM to lutetium and from actinium that from thorium to laurentium thorium to laurentium these elements 
these 14 elements and these 14 elements they are placed separately in the periodic table to the below that periodic table and they are known as f block elements here for the f block elements they are n minus 2 what is n that is the principal quantum number that is a principal quantum number n minus 2 f orbital is partially filled that's why these f block elements are also known as inner transition elements they are also known as inner transition elements these f block elements they are also that metals okay there are a few that, that uh, few characteristic about the f block element is that elements are which are belonging to the actinoid that is uranium that is a uranium atomic number 92 after these uranium elements all the elements are known as trans uranium trans uranium element and these all trans uranium elements these are man made elements and all are the radioactive elements these all are the radioactive elements this was there are these are the some features about the all the blocks s block p block d block and these is the f block what is the f block elements they are made up of lanthanoids and actinoid series lanthanoid and actinoid series totally 28 elements are present all are the metals they are inner n minus 2 that orbital is filled that's why they are known as inner transition metals or inner transition elements okay now if we see that the there are some trends in the periodic table that are known as the periodic trends that elemental properties they show that similarity along the group and gradual variation along the period means what as that classification of elements in the modern periodic table it is based on the increasing atomic number that's why the different elemental properties like their atomic radius atomic mass ionization enthalpy these all elemental properties they are looking to be same in a group but they it is a gradual difference while we are going along the period that horizontal period that these trends are explained in the terms of basically two fundamental factors which one that the first factor that force of attraction between the nucleus and the electrons of element what we can say that the force of attraction by exerted by the extra nuclear electron towards the nucleus why because the nucleus is positively charged and all electrons which are revolving around the nucleus they carry the opposite negative charge and second factor that is the force of repulsion between the electrons belonging to the same atom these two factors mainly explain the different trends what do you mean by trends that the some different features like let's see that firstly that the effective nuclear charge now we'll see the periodic trends that trends in the periodic table they are basically explain on the factor two factors that is the attraction between the extra nuclear electrons and the nucleus that is and second one the repulsion between the electrons belonging to the same atom first trend we can say that effective nuclear charge effective nuclear charge as all we know that nucleus carrying the protons it is possessing the positive charge and all electrons revolving around the nucleus they are having the negative charge there is a force of attraction between the all electrons and the nucleus but there is a slight difference while going to that as we have seen the quantum mechanical structure of atom which explains the extra nuclear part that the all electrons they are revolving around the nucleus among the different orbits okay due to these orbits that the distance between the nucleus and the electrons that is the outer electron and inner electron is large and that's why the force of attraction which can be experienced 
by the electrons which are belonging to the first orbit. So we can see that suppose this is a nucleus which is having positive charge, these are the orbits. If these are the electrons, then the force of attraction which is experienced by the, these two electrons which are closer to the nucleus it is more than the electrons which are somewhat far away from the that nucleus and again there is a force of repulsion between the electrons negatively charged electrons belonging to the same atom that's why it means that the inner electrons which are close to the nucleus they repel the outer orbit or outer orbit electron that is a means they are shielding that nucleus from experiencing the force of attraction between these nucleus and electron and this is also known as that is a shielding effect why because that effective nuclear charge what is effective nuclear charge that is a net charge experienced by the electron net charge experienced actually experienced by the electron it is called as effective nuclear charge which is which goes on decreasing when we see that the electrons belonging to the outer elect or outer orbit why because the inner electron or inner orbit electron they are shielding that's why that is mean we can denote that <coughs> effective elect at <coughs> nuclear charge by z effective and what is the shielding effect we have seen that the inner electrons shield outer electrons for, from the force of attraction from the nucleus this shielding effect which explains the different characteristics of an atom and that's why effective nuclear charge we can see that effective nuclear charge goes on increasing along the period goes on increasing along the period and goes on decreasing among the group means we are going to discuss the different trends in the periodic table along the period and among the group here effective nuclear charge that is the shielding effect it is goes on increasing while going through the uh, period means what that as we are passing from left to right in the periodic table the number of electrons as, as atomic number increases the number of electron increases as number of electron increases the force which is experienced by the outer electron it, it is becoming less and there is a effective nuclear charge increases effective nuclear charge increases but along the group that there is an increase in the orbit there is a increase in the orbit Me, means that outer orbit and nucleus this distance goes on increasing and that's why the effective nuclear charge goes on decreasing along the period another secondly we can discuss that the second trend in the periodic table that is a atomic radius as all we know what is the radius that is a distance of a circumference from the center of a circle likewise atomic radius that quantum mechanical structure of atom explains that we cannot say definitely that atom has a boundary if we see that this is the nucleus and these are the orbit we are drawing for our assumption but actually we cannot determine that any atom has a definite boundary and that's why that atomic radius of any element could not be directly determined and it is determined by the internuclear distance it is determined by the internuclear distance means what if we take two elements or two atoms their distance between their two nucleuses it is made half and that is considered as the atomic radius in case of non metals here we can classify that elements into the metals and non metals in case of non metals in case of non metals we know that atoms are covalently bonded with each other 
means what they are sharing the electrons and that's why they are bonded with each other by the covalent bond and that's why that radius which are which we are going to calculate it is known to be that the covalent radius it is known to be covalent radius why the distance between the two <coughs> we can say that distance between the two covalently bonded atoms covalently bonded atoms for example in a diamond that two carbon atom or in a cl2 molecule that the two chlorine atom they are covalently bonded with each other as by the sharing of electron how we can calculate that atomic radius that distance between two carbon atom distance between two covalently bonded carbon atom in an diamond is near about 154 and in two chlorine molecule is near about 198 but this distance is between the two atoms or two nuclei that's why like chlorine we can draw the structure this is the nucleus of chlorine this distance between the two nuclei of a chlorine is 198 and for the re 198 picometers i'm sorry that radius it is me measured in the picometer this radius can be calculated by making its half why because the distance between the two nuclei that is a half that's why atomic radius of a carbon atom would be 77 picometer while for the chlorine atom it is 99 picometer it is 99 picometer this is in case of non metals but in case of metal atoms that the, if we consider two adjacent metal atoms the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent metal atoms it and its half it is a atomic radius means what we can calculate the atomic radius by calculating the internuclear distance between two covalently bonded non-metals or adjacent metal atoms okay when we see that trend we are going to see the trend what is the trend in the periodic table that if we see that element along the period and element among the group we can notice that the <coughs> trend that as number of electron increases number of electron increases that atomic size means atomic radius why we are considering to determine the atomic size that atomic size goes on increasing and another method that while going through the group we know what is the group there are the seven periods in one group means while going down the periodic table there is addition of one orbit there is addition of one orbit automatically the size of an atom goes on increasing let's see some examples from lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen and fluorine not in the case of that uh, noble gas elements okay what is atomic size 152 picometers then 111 picometers another sodium potassium then rubidium and cesium here magnesium aluminium silicon phosphorus sulfur and chlorine we know the atomic radius these all radii are measured in the picometer okay 186 then 160 143 picometers
now look at the figures which figures these this one period and this one period while going through the period that atomic radius goes on decreasing goes on decreasing how that lithium from starting from the lithium 152 to in the first or uh, second group so second sorry second period that the fluorine having atomic radius of 64 picometers means what the size of an atom goes on decreasing while going through the period this one is the second third one fourth fifth sixth along the group that atomic radius goes on increasing this is the trend for the periodic table okay